So today I'm going to give you an overview of advertising self-regulation in Canada. Um, I'm, all, my, I'm going to preface my remarks by saying that I'm speaking about the regulatory and self-regulatory framework for advertising to children in Canada, excluding Quebec. You have speakers that will come after me who will be talking about that. So what I'm speaking about is uh, everywhere other than Quebec. Advertising Standards Canada, I'm going to spend a minute talking about us. We are a not-for-profit, self-regulatory uh, body. Anyway, we were set up in 1957 by the advertising industry as a self-regulatory body to administer the standards that the, uh, the industry uh, agrees, uh, agreed that are, is important to them that they want to follow and to show that they can, that they are responsible. We are composed of our members, include all sectors of the advertising uh, um, industry, including advertisers, advertising agencies, media organizations, law firms, and other um, interested parties. We have about 170 members. Um, and our mandate is to foster community confidence in advertising through self-regulation. This, what services does ASC provide? Um, we have quite a wide range. We administer uh, the standards through the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards. I will speak in uh, some detail about that in a little bit. We also do copy review service, pre-clearance of advertising, particularly broadcast advertising, in five regulated areas. And they are um, alcohol advertising, food and drug advertising, uh, cosmetic advertising, and advertising to children. Most of the, um, the, the pre-clearance uh, for, for categories such as food, alcohol, consumer drugs and cosmetics um, was previously done by the federal government. And when the government got out of that uh, function, um, ASC was asked to take it over. So in those categories, broadcast advertising is pre-cleared before um, a station will accept an ad. And that's uh, quite unique in, in the world, I think. I will also speak a little bit about the Canadian Children's Food and Beverage Advertising Initiative which ASC also was asked to administer. Now this just is a graphic that we use to um, demonstrate and to illustrate the regulatory framework. I'm going to speak about all those items. Canada has, um, in, in our view, a very robust system of self-regulation of advertising and advertising to children, which really is unique in the world. Some countries have some elements, but I'm not sure that there is one that does everything that we do. So first I'm going to talk, and you know, this is, hopefully you won't fall asleep, but then this is gonna be a little bit dry because I'm talking about codes and I'm talking about standards. Um, but anyway, let me start with the broadcast code for advertising to children. This is a self-regulatory code. It was developed in the 1970s by um, <clears throat> the broadcast industry and advertisers. And it is, in fact, a condition of a broadcaster's license. There are 14 clauses, which I will go through um, to show you the scope of the code. But basically, um, an advert <clears throat> a broadcaster cannot run a commercial uh, to children unless it has been approved and assigned a clearance number by the Children's Clearance Committee. So the broadcast code, you know, advertisers recognize that children are a special audience and they have special characteristics and that you have to be respectful when speaking to the child audience. So that's what the broadcast code uh, provisions um, are all about. Children un under the code, children are defined as under the 12 years of age, uh, 14 clauses and guidelines, and this clearance committee reviews finished commercials, so not scripts, but they actually see the finished commercials before they're approved and then ready to broadcast. Um, the committee, uh, first of all, children's broadcasting is uh, carried uh, during or adjacent to children's programming, 
and if the children form a substantial market for the product and the message is presented in a manner directed primarily to them, it will be considered uh, children's advertising. And, and they have to be under 12, as I mentioned. So the Children's Clearance uh, Committee that meets every, every other week to review commercials, um, the representatives include the uh, people from the advertising industry. The CRTC has a seat on the committee, uh, public and private broadcasters, for example, members, uh, representatives from the CRTC and private broadcasters are on the committee as well as parents and the parent representatives are provided are nominated from the Consumers Council of Canada and the stipulation is they must have be parents of children under 12 so that they they play an important role in seeing what um, uh, deciding whether or not what's proposed to be advertised to kids uh, the content complies with the code okay I'm going to go through a number of excerpts from the code to give you a sense of the kind of issues that it covers. Um, and a lot of them you'll see deal with uh, making sure that uh, kids are, what children see is factual, not misleading, and things like that. So, for example, um, visual presentations can't exaggerate the pro premium or characteristics of uh, a product. So you have to be factual and honest. The relative size of a product must be established so the ch child knows that, you know, that doll is really not uh, the size of the child, but is quite small. Um, when a children's drawing shows, uh, advertising shows the results of a drawing, it has to be uh, attainable by an average child, so it can't be exaggerated. The words new can only be used for a period of one year. And there are pro prohibitions on the kinds of products that can be advertised to children. So products not intended for children, such as video games or movies that are rated teen, uh, drugs, uh, proprietary medicines and vitamins cannot be advertised uh, to children. The, the code also prohibits direct urges, so you cannot say things like, here's some examples, bring home Spartacus on DVD, get a ticket to uh, Cuddle Bears, find a Holly Dolly in the doll aisle, because that's not appropriate. And as well, the advertising cannot encourage kids to, to uh, urge their parents to buy either. So things like buy, eat, watch, are prohibited terms under the code. Direct response techniques that ask a child to purchase by mail or telephone are also prohibited. Uh, puppets characters uh, well known to children can't be used to endorse or promote products and, can, and, and they cannot handle, consume, or endorse the product. Uh, there's this, uh, a section on, on safety which uh, the is commercials are looked at to make sure that kids and adults are not depicted in unsafe situations. For example, if you see someone in a kid's commercial who is uh, skiing or skateboarding or rollerblading or something, you will, make, you will see that they always have um, the appropriate safety gear. Uh, and we look to uh, those organizations for guidance as to what's appropriate. Uh, there's also, you will always see adult supervision and you just cannot show unsafe use of the product. For example, you wouldn't be able to show a child tossing up something in, up in the air and, and catching into his mouth. Something like that would not be allowed. Also, social values. The uh, code says that um, the ads must not encourage or portray a range of values inconsistent with the moral, ethical, or legal standards of contemporary Canadian society. So one of the things, these, these are some examples of things that the committee will look at when it sees a commercial to make sure that it doesn't show bullying or subverting authority figures. That would be things like teachers or parents. Um, you know, it can't make fun of or um, of teachers uh, breaking common rules. Here's an example of eating in a library, running uh, in a, on a deck in a pool or stealing and also a committee looks out to make sure that the appropriate portrayals of uh, gender or culture. So those are, you know, that's very important uh, and to take this very seriously. 
Can't suggest that possession of the product will make a child superior. Um, in addition to the broadcast code, there are guidelines um, under the code that deal specifically with food advertising to children. And here are some examples. Snack foods can't be presented as a substitute for a meal. You cannot to disparage healthy choices or, or fruits and vegetables. The portion size must be either the serving size on the product's label or um, if there is no serving size, a size that is um, appropriate for that age of the child to consume and you cannot show excessive consumption in a, in a commercial. So you can't show someone uh, looking uh, disparagingly at an apple, for example, nor can you show someone scarfing down french fries. First of all, that serving would be not appropriate for a child of that age and would suggest a c excessive consumption. So that would not be approved if that was in a commercial. Um, I mentioned that the kids' uh, commercials are all pre-cleared under the broadcast code. Also, there's a double clearance because if it deals with food, advertising to children of food, they also have to, uh, the ads have to comply with the Food and Drug Regulations, uh, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency's Guide to Food Labeling. And again, um, ASC will review the commercials to see if, to make sure that it complies with the government regulations regarding food. And if it does, then we'll signify, we'll give a number. And if, you know, if there is a problem, the ad is sent back to the advertiser um, and we work with the advertiser to, you know, to tell them how they, they should fix it to make sure that it does comply. Now, that's on the preclearance side. I'm going to speak now about um, the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards in the Consumer Complaint Mechanism because the regulatory framework deals has um, you know two components one is preclearance of children's advertising and the other and that applies to broadcast and the other is the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards um, which for children's advertising applies in non-broadcast media and the complaint mechanism so um, under uh, consumers can su submit complaints to ASC under um, the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards and they are reviewed and adjudicated by a volunteer committee. We have uh, consumer response councils. We have an English council, French council, and councils in uh, various regions of Canada made up of volunteers, uh, advertising industry and public representatives, and they make decisions as to whether uh, an ad violates the code. Uh, we also report publicly online in our uh, about cases that have been upheld for learning for the public and for the industry, and our online complaints reports. We just it so happens that um, because of the preclearance of broadcast advertising, we get very few complaints about advertising uh, to children. Now, the Canadian Code of Advertising Children, as I met, uh, Canadian Code of Advertising standards uh, applies to advertising in all media um, so it would include uh, advertising on the internet advertising in social media mobile media new new forms of um, media as long as the message is directed to Canadians and is designed to um, influence their choice or behavior then the code applies and we could accept complaints um, you'll see that it is quite broad in its scope, but the two relevant clauses here are advertising to children and advertising to minors. The advertising to children clause says that ads must not exploit their credulity, lack of experience, sense of loyalty, and must not present information or illustrations that might result in their physical, emotional, or moral harm. So if we, if we received a complaint about an ad on the internet or um, on, on a social media site directed to Canadian children, we would review it under this section. As like the broadcast code, um, the definition, uh, I'm not gonna read it again, but it is the same. Um, children are defined as under 12 years old, um, and that's the definition. As well, we have made sure that the, uh, the same guidelines that apply under the broadcast code 
apply under the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards. So we have the, so they mirror each other so that the, there's no, not separate standards for different media. So you'll see, I just, spent, I just talked about these standards as they apply for broadcast. So if you were doing a print ad or uh, an ad in a video game or online game or something, the same rules apply. So this, the guideline is totally consistent with the broadcast code. Um, so I'm not going to take you through it again. I'm going to move on to the third part of my presentation today. Uh, this is focusing on food. Um, there is a, a voluntary initiative that commenced in 2007 by um, Canadian, uh, major Canadian advertisers to change the landscape of food and beverage advertising to children to encourage uh, healthier dietary choices. This, uh, <clears throat> these are the companies, there are now, it started with 16, there are now 19 participating companies, you'll see many of them are um, you know, the leading Canadian advertisers. I've, the, um, the participants asked, because of our experience in self-regulation, uh, asked Advertising Standards Canada to be the administrator and our role is to monitor how uh, the companies are complying with the commitments that they have made under this program and we audit and we report on their progress. We, uh, we've issued two reports and are in the throes of working on our third. So what are they, what are they agreed to do? They have agreed to promote better for you foods or healthy lifestyles in 100% of their advertising in child-directed media, uh, again, under 12 years old. Uh, that includes TV, radio, print online, interactive, video, computer games, DVDs, and movies, mobile media. And the, uh, each company who advertises children um, has a definition of better for you foods which conform to nutritional guidelines and are consistent with uh, Canadian government standards. Um, they tell us uh, what products comply with their, uh, these standards and ASC has them assessed by an independent dietitian to make sure that's correct. Um, and as well, there are certain other uh, uh, commitments that these companies have agreed to, that any licensed characters they use can only be for better for your products. They will not seek uh, or pay for any product placement. There is no advertising in elementary schools or now preschool um, uh, except for uh, educational public service or fundraising if the school allows. Um, under the initiative, 10 companies are uh, directing 100% of their advertising, as I mentioned, to better for you products. Uh, they, you know, for example, they, they may be reduced um, uh, fat or redu reduced sodium. They, meet, they may meet the uh, Heart and Stroke Foundation health check and um, many of the products meet healthy, the government requirements for healthy eating claims. Nine of the companies have decided they are not directing any advertising to children under 12. So I mentioned that we audit the co company's um, compliance of have they done uh, what they said they would do. And on our website, ASC's website, you can find the details of the company's commitments. So we've, 2008 and 2009 compliance reports are out and they're on our website. Uh, we reviewed uh, the comp all the child-directed food and beverage broadcast ads as because we see them, um, pre uh, ASC pre-clears them, so we checked every single one and we also did spot checks of ads in children's programming. We wanted, monitored children, the company's own websites and third-party websites and reviewed advertising in children's magazines and that's what we looked at to uh, make our determination. We found that um, they're very high level of compliance. The companies are committed to this program and um, they, they take it very seriously. We, there were a few minor compliance issues where something, an ad may have um, inadvertently been broadcast at the wrong time, but as soon as it was brought to their attention, this is promptly corrected and they've taken steps to make sure it doesn't happen again. They've also made sure that all their staff, agencies, advertising agencies, media companies uh, are also well aware of the, uh, their commitments and do support them. Now, 
the, as I said, the initiative was, um, the intention of the initiative was to change uh, the mix of food and beverage products being advertised to children under 12. So how, how, how has it been doing? Um, we have found that there have been quite extensive product reformulations to improve the nutritional benefits like reducing sugar, ready, ready to eat cereals, sugar content reduced from 15. Now they range, depending on the product, from 10 to 12 grams. Uh, and cereals contribute less than 4% of daily sugar intake and 3% of daily sodium intake. Uh, in terms of quick service restaurants, uh, prior to this initiative, there weren't many options for parents who wanted kids to eat something a little better for them. So there are now five meals, include a serving of fruit and 100% milk or apple juice instead of fries and soft drink. Um, the Burger King chicken tenders meal has been 20% uh, reduced in sodium and the McDonald's grilled snack wrap 32%. Certain brands are no longer advertised to children at all. Uh, for example, things like Hubba Bubba, Pop-Tarts, um, con uh, confectionery products, um, ice cream, peanut butter um, are not advertised anymore by the participating companies to children under 12. So that's, that's really a overview, short overview of um, how, how the landscape looks in uh, the rest of Canada. So thank you very much.